Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, CCX here. Welcome back to more Metroid Prime. In the last episode, um, we defeated a few things. We've actually obtained the Morph Ball Bombs. We end up also obtaining the various suits, and now we can actually go back into heat-resistant areas. Well, heat heated fields is actually is a limit to how much heated field we can actually take, but other than that, you know, we can actually progress with the game now. <laughs> we can go deeper because... Funny enough, the next area that we're going to be heading into is actually going to be the Magmore Caverns. It's a level that ends up sporting a theme that was in, that's in Super Metroid, but, you know, this was actually the first time that I actually heard it instead of in Super Metroid. I think it was in Super Metroid. I don't really remember. Don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I played Super Metroid, but you know what? I'm going to say it anyways as self-confidence. It's in Super Metroid, so that means that it is in, Met in, um, in Super Metroid. Then again, don't take my word for it. Why don't you play it yourself? I mean, seriously. In all honesty, though, this game is relatively a good starting point for people who wants to go ahead and actually start with the Metroid series. It's kind of similar to Castlevania in a sense, where most people will say, Hey, you want to get into the Castlevania series? Well, why don't you play Symphony of the Night? Because it's basically what every single Castlevania game ends up... Um, doing after a while i really should get to a castlevania game you want to know why because castlevania has also been one of those series that i also played um i did play uh legacy of darkness which was on the n64 um it was an okay game it was a little bit difficult to beat because i had no memory cards so that was always fun because castlevania legacy of darkness was actually one of those games that you needed a memory card to progress so anyways, now that we've almost cleared out almost every single batch of areas, we can now continue on forward. We'll actually be looking into that blue area a little bit later, but for right now, let's head into the Magmore Cavern. Now the Magmore Caverns is a quite interesting place. It's heated. It's wonderful and ends up spawning a very great music even though the thing i like about metroid prime is that whenever you actually get into a new area it doesn't really play the entire theme as of yet it um actually ow okay well that was cool nice introduction there guys uh, hey 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 i managed to get you guys cool because right now you're actually he you're hearing the interlude of the theme so, let's open that. It's actually just a save point, just in case you guys want to just save, you know, automatically. Go ahead. But, we got ourselves another new enemy right here. Whoa, but first, uh, what I got? Uh, a Grasby, or Greaseby. A sub-volcanic carrying feeder carapace can be breached by missiles. Oh, so it can't actually be killed. Ah, you screech batch. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, can be killed. Oh, good. Anyways, time to hear the theme of the Magmar. Not yet. <laughs> We're not there yet. That's kind of what I like about this. All right, we got ourselves another new annoying enemy, and this one kind of likes to bury under the ground. This one is a Oh, it's a barrel. Wow. You know what? You guys are not being subtle with your names anymore. I'm just going to ignore you. So, anyways, let's listen to the theme of the Magmar Caverns. Like I said, wonderful soundtrack, guys. Just wonderful. Anyways, these guys are puffers. What they kind of like to do is that if you end up shooting them when you're close to them, they kind of will end up exploding in your face. That's uh, kind of the indication that you don't want to go ahead and get close to them. These guys are Magmores. These are the dwellers of the Magmore Caverns. I mean, it's called Magmore Caverns for a reason. It's not just called, it's not just the name. It's actually uh, the inhabitants of these guys. These guys actually end up existing in the original Metroid. I actually don't know where exactly, but I'm assuming in the lava area. 
<laughs> Anyways, you may have noticed. This thing looks awfully... No, actually, is it this one or is it the other one I'm thinking of? I think it might be this one. It might not be this one. I don't really know. No, eh, hmm. No, actually, it is that one. Okay. Um, there's actually something inside there. We can't go ahead and get it right now because we don't have the super powerful missiles as of yet. Which is essentially the super missiles. We don't get those until way later into the game. And by way later, meaning when we get into a particular, a particular area in the game, which sucks. But, eh, what can you do? I guess I think it's that one, or it might be this one. No, because the game is actually not going to tell you. The game does tell you where it is, and we'll be going into more detail of that a little bit later. See, me unlike previous 2D Metroid games where you essentially have to go ahead and just, you know, defeat certain amounts of enemies and then that's it. Before I go ahead and continue, these guys are Triclops. They basically grab you and you can actually kill them by letting them grab a bomb and then they will blow themselves up. Pretty, um, simple to be able to dispatch. But anyways, unlike in 2D Metroid games where your goal is to just defeat a bunch of enemies uh, or boss or certain bosses to be able to progress to the final area, Metroid Prime and onwards, and the, the Metroid Prime series kind of do it a different way. The way how they do it is that you have to sometimes collect MacGuffins. And for this game, there are 12 artifacts in the game. In fact, well, I don't, okay, wow, okay, I just completely got rid of that. I don't think the game will kind of have it there, but let's see, uh, logbook. Ah, okay, here they are. You can actually see it right there. The art of the little square, the thing in the middle is basically the artifacts. You can actually see how much we have by counting the segments. You need all 12 of those to be able to actually get to the final area of the game. Can you tell where the final area of the game is? In fact, you've already seen it in the second episode of this of this yeah. gameplay. But yeah, you need all 12 artifacts to actually progress to the final area. That's kind of one of the things that probably stop people from beating this game is because, you know, the artifacts are in a, are in areas that you kind of wouldn't really expect. And I wouldn't say that is bad gameplay or whatever because the game does end up telling you, hey, at some point you are going to have to collect these artifacts to have something happen in this area. I don't know why I did that. But... You know, for a Let's Play sake, I will, uh, uh, well, Let's Play sake, you have no choice. I will be ending up showcasing where mostly all the artifacts are located. I don't know why I say mostly. I don't know what I'm saying. I have no choice but to show you guys, because if you don't, if I don't show you, you guys can't get to the final area in the first place. So, yeah. When I first played this game, that was kind of the thing that kind of tripped me up. And, you know, I usually use I use the uh, game facts guide to be able to tell me where all the artifacts were located, mainly because of the fact that it was kind of really difficult to find where all 12 artifacts was located. And it wasn't really as um, self-explanatory with the hint system that they give you for all the artifacts because it was a bit confusing. Like some of them tells you that, hey, it's in this type of location if you... But considering the game is, you know, very, very adventurous, you're not going to really know where it is unless, you know, you shoot almost every nook and cranny in the game. And it's kind of one of the things that I don't blame people for not really knowing where, you know, any... They are, it, wow, I fell. That was glorious. Anyways, man, I really wish we end up having ourselves the maneuverability that makes me not have to worry about that. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah... It's essentially one of those things that once you once you figure out where all of them are, they kind of you end up committing it to memory. But for the most part, you're not gonna really remember where all of them are for your first playthrough because you might you are gonna end up essentially using either a strategy guide or you're gonna just utilize um, you're just gonna utilize um, a guide in general. It really all depends. But he's new. No, those are old. Okay, so these guys are weak sauce. The turrets will start to have different prop. Well, actually, no. I don't think there are different properties. Maybe the ones that we actually scanned were just the piss ones. Because there are actually two different turrets. There's the ones that are that shoot 
um, blue bullets at you, which is, we saw one in the beginning of the game, but apparently those are not the ones that I was thinking of. Now, I need to get rid of you, because funny enough, we actually are going to be heading into another area. We need to head to that area immediately because we won't be able to get our uh, very sweet upgrade back in Talon 4. Mainly because we kind of need the ability for it, so we do need to go this way first. Uh, whoa, okay, I'm being shot at. That's nice. The turrets hurt for obvious reasons, because they're turrets, and they suck. Me trying to aim at them is actually really not good. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Okay, that's, I thought that was just a regular thing. Oh well. Now, is there anything in here that we need? Uh, no, not that. Watch this, nope. As I stated before, for research data, when you end up seeing a red square, that's essentially a percentage for your log. If you don't see a red mark, that means that it's kind of completely pointless. There is one specific area that you're going to be doing nothing but scanning because of the area that you're in. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and pretend that none of that really exists. Anyways, doing this is a lot easier with the Wii mote. I ended up saying that it was smoother in the first episode. I ended up saying that it was smoother to play with the Wii. It's actually not because it's a, there's like some things to be able to actually just aim. If you're good with the Wii mote, then it's fine. But, you know, to each their own. But anyways, it's time to go to an area that I kind of wish that it was actually cold right now. The Fendara Drifts. Anyways, let's go. And I have to say, the Fendara, or Fenrana, Fendrana, I, I think it's Fendrana. Is it Fendara, Fendrana? No, I think it's probably Fendrana. Yeah, it looks like it's, it looks like it's Fendrana. I think it's, Fen, yeah, I think it's Fendrana's drifts. Anyways, go ahead. But yeah, it's time to head to the area that is our ice level. And it sports the magnificent theme ever. Welcome to the Fendrana Drifts, ladies and gentlemen. This is by far... Well, it's a very relaxing theme, is what I can say that this theme ends up having. I want to shoot that so you can go ahead and, well, scan this little guy, which is a chrysalis. Or a chrysalite. Anyways, just shoot him on a missile and you can get rid of him. I'll scan this, and that basically unlocks the door that was locked up top from above us. If we go over here, we end up finding ourselves a save point. Get rid of that guy. And let's go ahead and save. Do we have to scan any of these things? I highly doubt it. What does he actually say? New personnel must report at a South Research Facility. Failure to report will be pen pen penalized by a 30% ration cut and extra duty. Okay, that's a bit odd. Western Temple in the Phase 2 locked down. All projects are postponed under no circumstances are personal to attempt access. Okay. And what do you say? All ballistics, all ballistics support personnel report to research lab Hydra. Lockdown containment, plan 38. This says, no, it says 3A. In effect, until further notice. Well, that's a bit odd. Anyways, let's just save real quick. But I wonder what all these research is actually about. Hmm, whatever. Has nothing to do with us. Well, it does, just not yet, you know. Alright, so our major goal in here is to essentially get to that said temple. You can, funny enough though, you can tell it's a temple if you actually see like the Chozo pieces that's around the area. Like right there, you can tell that that's a Chozo type ruin that we're going to be going to soon. So if you act, so, I mean, they probably don't showcase that a lot in the game, but from what I've seen thus far, it feels like it. Anyways, these guys are kind of difficult to get because they kind of go invisible. They're called flicker bait. F flicker bait. <laughs> flicker bats. Scavenger with optimal camouflage that renders its invisibility to the naked eye. Um, invisible to the naked eye. Flicker bats are deceptive creatures. They only the only way to track them reliably is to is with X-ray imaging. Well, basically, they keep flying around. The only way to actually see them is that you need the X-ray visor, which we don't have right now. We don't get the X-ray visor until way later in the game. 
and these guys, I think they might be new variants. Who knows? They no. Okay, yeah, they are new variants. What you guys are called? Scatter bombs. Oh well, scatter bomb you. Okay, we got ourselves another new enemy around here, which are I think you guys are called the sheep. Nah, baby sheikoffs. Basically, the only way you can kill them is you have to shoot them in their backside. And once you shot them in their backside, their um, their friggin' weak points actually gets a notice, and you can actually shoot them even in their faces. Yeah, it's a bit odd at first, but they're fairly easy to beat, you know? Go ahead. Be careful, though, because they will sometimes do a desperation attack and still end up um, shooting their ice balls at you. I'm shooting that ice breath, I should say. But until then, you don't really have to worry too much about it. Um, another thing I should have warned you guys about. Um, I know I'm saying that the... Sh uh, well, actually, no. I never said anything about it. I never really noticed it until now. But the strafing is a bit odd in the Wii version of the game. It's a lot easy. It doesn't really look like that you strafe for the most part. But trust me, I am strafing. Now, another thing I should warn you guys about. And if you guys are trying to you know play this game alongside me there is one thing that i should warn you if you are playing the gamecube version amazing. if you're playing the gamecube version there are one set of enemies that only appear once and i think it's the sh i think it's the streak bats i'm not sure if it was i think it's the streak ice bats that only appear once or it might be the any types of streak bats and before we actually leave, we kind of want to go in here because there is a cho there should be a Chozo lore around here. Unless I'm thinking of another area that has the Chozo lore and it's actually not in this area specifically. Specifically. Spa suspefu. S word. Suspific. Suspific. You know what? That's kind of like one of the only words that I can never seem to pronounce properly. Even for the life of me, no matter how hard I try. But you people know what I'm trying to say. At least I hope you guys know what I'm trying to say or else I'm going to be looking like a dunce. Then again, I already look like a dunce. Wait a minute. I know there's something over there. Seems like a little bit of a piece that seems to be sticking out from over there. There is something I'm missing. Ah! Can't even get it even if we wanted to. Oh well. That's another thing about the map system in this game is that if you see anything that looks out of place, you might as well just check it and then see what you can actually find. Now, you guys new, you guys old, you guys are also new, even though you guys should be just the same type of enemies. Oh, you guys are I Seriously? Really, game? They're just ice variants. It's not even new at all. Eh, whatever. I'm not going to complain. <laughs> it sounds like you are. I know, but anyways... Let's go into this room and see what we can find. Ah, more of these bomb chew guys. Or bomb you. I keep calling them bomb chews. They're not bomb chews. They're bomb yous. But anyways, we are the she -goffs. Ah, here it is. Here's the thing I was looking for. Another Chozo lore. Chozo scripts translated. As the great poison reaches ever further into the planet, we Chozo began to feel the gnawing of despair before it. It's too late. We now make our last stand. We have begun to build a temple to contain this darkness. At its heart, we will place a a cipher, a, a cipher or cipher. Is it cipher or cipher? I don't know. A mystical lock powered by twelve artifacts. Yep, and that's kind of the indication that you need twelve artifacts to progress through the game. Did I say twelve? I hope I didn't say fifteen, or else I will feel like an idiot. Twelve artifacts that filled with the mu as much power as we chose or can harness. We wonder, though, even when we were done, will it be too late? And will the power of the temple and the, and the cipher itself prove strong enough to hold back the poisonous tide that even now swells within the ground, threatening all life? Like I said, if you are not into the, if you're not into Metroid Prime's story, and like I, and another thing is, is that it tells its story by its lore. By the lores that you can, you it's optional. You don't have to scan them. And in all honesty, you can legitimately ignore all of them and still continue with the game without any problems. But I mostly recommend that if you you know you want to know more about what's really going on in the game, I recommend scanning them because they kind of end up giving you some very nice details of things that you might want to know. And I don't think we can actually get up here. 
No, we can't actually get up here. Damn. Actually, are we supposed to even be here? Uh, give me a second. No, we're not. We're supposed to go this way. So, wait, hold on. We can't really go this way because we don't have the friggin', um, uh, we don't have the ability to actually get up there. We're not supposed to be here at all, are we? No. Oops. Well, this is kind of one of the uh, major staples that I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> actually, wait. Are you sure we're not supposed to be here? Because something tells me we are. And I'm... Oh, no, 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 no. Wait. I am... Okay, to be able to get out of the ice, you, you need to jump repeatedly. So, yeah. Be sure to do that. Anyways, you baby little she-goffs. Come on. Let's fight. Let me just break you open real quick. Y you don't need your casing. After a while, they will start to charge at you, but... Once again, not really hard enemies to fight. They're very simple. Hmm. Okay, I don't think we're, we are supposed to be here. So that means I need to head back to... Oh, you know what? I'm dumb. We are. We were supposed to head back to Talon 4. So you know what I'm going to do? Um, let's see. I'm going to end the part now. Because what's supposed to happen is that there's supposed to be a cutscene that's supposed to activate here. Because we end up seeing a certain somebody. But for right now, that cutscene's not going to play because uh, we're not supposed to be here. But hey, at least I'm here now. I showed you guys here early. Mind you, it doesn't really matter where you go. Normally, this always happens to me. I always end up in this place. I knew it was going to happen, but whatever. Anyways, I will be cutting back to the Madmore Caverns. And then we'll be heading... We'll be heading back to Talon 4. We're actually going to be heading... We're, I'll, I'll end up showcasing where we're going to be heading back to. It's not really that far off. So anyways, guys, CCX, over and out. Laters!